enjoy Tornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning into the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and I'm joined today to my left, fellow marketeer now, Matt Ritchie. Pleasure to be back. Seth. Now, also, I said fellow marketeer for the listener, former sales technician, new marketeer. Uh, jumped over, got here on the marketing side. So thanks for for coming on, and thanks for joining the marketing team. Yeah, it's been a it's been a hit the ground running, drinking from a fire hose. But I'm glad to to be in the position that I am now. Awesome. Well, in the position that you're in, uh, among many other things, you've been uh, kind of the direct liaison between Hornady and our sponsored shooters. And yep. there's a ton of different sponsorships that we have for all these different sports. One of which Free gun, and our guest today across the table, Dylan Easley. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. And you're here for the zombie shoot. Yes. And the zombie shoot. Now this is what the 11th or 12th 11th. zombie shoot. I believe the 11th. And I think I've been at seven of them, maybe give or take. Wow. So I've been to a few. Yeah, and I've I've been to the match. I've really not participated, but uh, it just looks like a ton of fun. And we'll talk about. Three guns specifically, we'll talk more about the zombie shoot, but so you're a, anything you do that you do for money or prizes, I think you could say is professional. So as a professional three gunner. Yeah, uh, we'll go with it. Yeah, Before you were a professional three gun, Dylan, what were you doing when you were younger? What got you, where'd you grow up and, and what got you into shooting? So I grew up in a small town outside of Kansas City called Excelsior Springs. Uh, grew up on a farm. Uh, so like when you guys talk about stuff like hunting on public lands and things like that, uh, I, I grew up on a farm, so we hunted on a farm, we hunted on a hundred acres and then yeah. some family man, land on top of that. And, uh, so started in, you know, deer hunting, dove hunting, uh, squirrel hunting, rabbits, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, never really even considered, you know, that there was competitive shooting in the world. It was just an aspect of like, well, that's what we did to put food on the table. Yeah. Uh, so I was a kid at high school who, you know, had the weird looking chicken. You know, for lunch, yeah. Because the uh, weird looking chicken was the you know, the dove or quail or whatever we had shot, and it yeah. was left over from dinner. So that's cool. Yeah. So grew up around firearms. Grew up around it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of an underlying tone with a lot of people in this industry. Is you know, grew up as a way of life. Yeah. And that's a great way to grow up. Yeah, and and it's an expectation. Um, we would go hunting, and it was an aspect of like, is your safety on? Oh yeah. You know, don't point that at people. You know, you you had to. Yeah, all the safety stuff started when you were eight, nine, ten years old. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, unfortunately, that's it, we push it a lot, but it's sure. not pushed as much as culturally as we should. As gonna, yeah, culturally, it you know, and I'm a pretty young guy, but I remember in high school for for the yearbook, you know, everybody brought everybody on the trap team brought their shotguns yeah. into the gym and took a photo, and yep. I don't think that kind of stuff oh, flies man. anymore. But no, we, I mean. Where I where I graduated, we still had a silhouette team and and a yeah and a a trap team and all that yeah and it was just kind of we were the one of the only ones in our district that still did it yeah but yeah so I can remember back when I was in school uh, and looking back now living in Kansas City it's like oh man this was crazy we had BB guns and we did a hunter safety course where you went down and shot BB guns at targets to show that you could safely and proficiently shoot a BB gun inside really? the school and then now you look at it you're like man that's that's crazy compared to what we see now. Uh, yeah. you know, like with, uh, a lot of the stuff that I have from sponsors and matches and everything else, a lot of the shirts I have, have guns or ammo or something on them. And I go to my kids and go, Peyton, you can't wear that to school. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, that has, that's one of dad's Hornady shirts and it's got a couple of bullets on the front. And if the teachers kind of recognize it, now we got to explain things and, yeah. you know, they, they go so far overboard in the opposite direction now really? that you got to be kind of careful. Well. Well, luckily for us and it's all, everybody at this table grew up pretty rural. Yeah grew up hunting and shooting and stuff. And so growing up, like you said, you were, you know, it was a, it was, you were hunting, you were shooting for that. Did you find yourself enjoying target shooting or, or like, you know, taking the deer rifle out before season and just shooting? Did you enjoy Not that? Not the deer rifle. Oh, yeah. um, that was, uh, this was a bolt action. And for okay. me at the time, like I wanted that 22 pop, pop, with pop, a, you know, yeah, I wanted to go banana through, give me, <laughs> give me a couple of bricks of it. We never had anything that was mag fed. It was all tube fed. Okay. So, I mean, I'm talking old, 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 like the old Winchester we had still had like the little curved, uh, cover for the ejection on it to where it curved them straight down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, load the tube up and you got 15 in there and let's go play, put some cans up. And I was in heaven. 
That's cool. And, uh, you know, deer rifle was like, okay, dad started me out on a 22 to 50 when I was, you know, 10, 12 years old. And then I got to shoot the 243 a little bit later. And then it was like, oh, you need to go buy your own rifle. I was like, well, <laughs> now we're going to jump to the 270 or whatever I ended up buying at the yeah. time. Uh, but now it was an aspect of like that ammo was expensive. I'm going to sight it in. It needs to be dialed on. And it's like, okay, now, don't touch don't it. Touch it. Yep. Because in November, it's game time. I'm planning on shooting one shot and being done. Yeah. When did you transition into one kind of realizing that, oh, shooting sports are a thing and that, oh, I enjoy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't good. Oh. Um, so I started out with motorcycles and did some uh, stunt riding and a couple other things and uh, some videos and comp- you know trying to push the competition side of it yeah. and sponsor stuff there. And I uh, realized when I had kids and then moving into profession, like, I, I can't get hurt. Yeah, that's a dangerous you know, sport. Yeah. Exactly. Dangerous. And um, it's also not the best image when you're going to be a professional. Okay. So if you're going to get your doctorate, open a practice, everything else, you can't be the degenerate out on a motorcycle doing things that are pretty illegal. Even if you're yeah. just doing them in a parking lot, it still looks bad. Sure. Uh, and trying to explain to somebody you got hurt rolling on the front wheel of a motorcycle at 60 miles an hour. Yep. They're looking at you going, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so when I gave that up, when my son was born, um, kind of didn't know what I was going to do, but I've never been without some sort of hobby. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to build an AR. Right. You know, like it's a good plan. Played some, played some call of duty. I'm like, I'm gonna get an AR and an AK, find out what I like, uh, built one and then bought an AK, refinished the stock. Didn't really know what else to do with it. Uh, shot them a little bit. And then, you know, just kind of did that for a few years till I graduated college, started a practice, start to get some disposable income. Uh, I had a buddy who came out, I was collecting NFA items and, um, my dad had told him like, Hey, you know, if you're looking to want to try a silencer, come out to shoot with my son, he'll show them to you. Yeah. I'm like, all right, yeah, man, come on out. So we're out there, and he's like, well, I'm thinking about getting a whatever. I'm like, yeah, here you go. And he's looking at me wide-eyed like, I was, I've been thinking about this for two years, and you mean you, you tell me you have one? Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> I don't have a hobby, so I'm collecting NFA items. And so uh, I let him try a whole bunch of stuff, and while we're standing there, he goes, man, he goes, you ever heard about three gun? He goes, you got your pistol here, and you got a shotgun here, and you got another shotgun here, and you got a couple ARs. And he goes, it's really all you need to go play. And I'm going never heard of it sounds right. cool so, yeah. yeah sounds like a great i idea. have three guns yeah. yeah i'm like i got all these guns i got nothing to do with it and like i played football i played baseball i like competing everything else so we were shooting everything else we said you know we're gonna go do it we're gonna go we're gonna sign up for this club match that's two and a half three hours away and the whole way there uh we're talking about the fact that for six or eight months we had been shooting on my range and shooting steel and shooting paper and we've been shooting a lot these guys have no idea what they're in store for <laughs> We didn't know what we were in store for. <laughs> sure. Uh, when we left, I want to say there was 50 people shooting the match. And I was like 43. And he was like 45. And we get in the, the car and we're on the way home and it's silent. Yeah. It's obvious we both got our egos checked really, really well. And uh, we're going on the road and all of a sudden he just blurted and goes, hey, are we going next month? I'm like, oh, thank God, because I was going to go without you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we did. We, we, we got absolutely destroyed. Uh, some of the targets that just beat us to death. That's the first thing we did when we got back. It's like, hey, you want to split the cost, and we're going to buy these targets. We're going to put them on the range. One of them was a spinner. Um, oh, heavy yeah. plate on the bottom, light plate on the top, yep. trying to get it to rotate yep. completely. It ate our lunch. And then it was like, well, we don't really have the right shotgun, so we're going to have to buy a new shotgun with changeable chokes and a longer tube. And then like, well, we need better sights on our pistol. So by the time we were done, I think I figured out my first year of shooting three gun cost me about twenty eight grand. Oh my goodness. But it was like, can I say drinking from a fire hose, right? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. no, no, no. I'm going to take all, all of the information I can possibly get yeah, and I'm going right to buy on. targets and I'm going to buy everything humanly possible to try and get better. Mm-hmm. And I spent every extra dollar on ammo and then eventually realized like, man, maybe, maybe I should do components and like load my own. Sure. Um, especially at that time in 2010 or well, 2012 availability wasn't exactly great. Nope. So um, you know, I didn't start during 2008, 2009 when it was really bad, mm-hmm. but it was one of those where if we don't find a couple cases of rifle ammo, yeah, we're done for the year. Yeah, right? we're not yeah. doing it. Yeah. Exactly. And then of course prices were higher then too. So, yeah. uh, but then, yeah, we, I mean, we got our clocks cleaned and it was about six, eight months later, you show up and you're rolling in the middle of, of uh, rolling into the fall and people are like, well, Hey, are you going to go shoot this big match? Yeah. Where's it of at? Of course. Yeah. It's in Texas and it's over three days. And you're like, 
where do we stay at hotels? Yeah. Like, who's driving down? Can we carpool? It's just like whatever you could figure out, right? Uh, it was full-on addiction at that point. Hook, uh, line, yeah. and sinker. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. And so that's, I mean, that's the first year I tried to get into Hornady Zombies was, you're like, wait, if there's a zombie match and it's only like four hours away? Yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, it's sold out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then I think the following year, I, they may have still been doing where you write a check and fill out all the paperwork and mail it in. And I didn't know where to get that stuff, so I think I missed it that year, yeah. too. So. Wow, that is yeah. that is going like, I'm going to dip my toe in the water and then just falling in yeah. head first into the pool. Well, yeah. What's interesting to me is how that, you know, you you did that with three gun and we're, I'm a PRS shooter, you know, or NR, you know, NRL PRS, Seth is too. And it's the same for me. Went to the first match, got my butt handed to me on all the positional stuff. So I went home, built a tank trap, built yep. a barricade. And that's what I focused on, you know, yeah. and, and yeah, went whole hog optics, stock, you know, oh, every, yeah. you know actions, triggered all that yeah. bipod, all that stuff. So it's just kind of across the board and like, you know, bass, I'm going to go bass fishing and you t- somebody go, you go with somebody and they're like, oh yeah, you need this. You need that yeah. reel. You need that rod, this line, get this, these plastics. And then pretty soon you're yeah. thousands of dollars deep into yeah. it. And you're like, well, oh, I'm a bass fisherman now, or I'm a, I'm a three gun shooter. <laughs> well, I mean, a think, of it, think of it like along the lines of an addictive personality, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So I could argue you have a fairly healthy addiction, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, cool. You're going to go build this. You're going to build this. Now addiction may be time, energy, money, everything else. Well, I, but yeah, I spent all of those. Yeah. Um, but it's much better than like, Hey, you know what? I really, 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 really like to drink mm-hmm. and party and do drugs and everything else. Well, hey, guess what? I don't have the money for drugs or alcohol because mm-hmm. shooting free yeah. gun, USPSA, <laughs> yeah. PRS, 22 PRS, everything else. So, um, yeah, there's no money left over for that no, stuff. That's a good, that's a healthy addiction, yep. I guess. And yep. the Hornady security fireproof keypad safe. With a heavy-duty 16-gauge steel body, extra-thick 8-gauge steel door, and four 1-inch diameter locking lugs, the Fireproof Safe achieves a fire rating of 30 minutes for up to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Both the interior and adjustable shelf are covered in a protective carpet that offers flexible storage configurations while safeguarding valuables from damage. The Fireproof Keypad Safe from Hornady Security. You talked about the ego thing. That is almost to a T what sucked me in to the competitive side of shooting, which uh, the first match that I ever ran was with our senior ballistician, and it was the Thunder Beast uh, Sniper Adventure Challenge, which was much more than a shooting match. And they still host that event every year. And it's something that if you're into that sort of thing, probably go ahead and look into it. It's awesome. It's uh, grid coordinated uh land navigation yeah. with a lensatic compass hmm. um it's stretched out over a bunch of time and up and over mountains and there's there's mental games and there's just physical things that suck really bad and then you're also shooting hmm. and uh Jaden and I have a background that we kind of you know knew how to do a lot of that stuff so um we ran that match and we won our division we were running the sprint, sprint class and I was like man that was that was cool sign me up for more of those so we signed up for another match it was actually here in Nebraska, and the, the group that put the match on isn't around anymore. It's called the Walker Draw Old Breed Gun Club here in Nebraska. And it was uh, the Walker Draw match. And I assumed that it was similar to what we'd just done, which was locate, range, engage the target. And so, you know, I had, we were both shooting 308s at the time. I think maybe Jaden just built a Creedmoor, like 2013 or 2014. And uh, I was still shooting the 308, five-round magazines. Never need anything. Uh, range finder, you know, dope on, you know, if we used JBM ballistics back in those days and it was laminated and 550 corded to my rifle. And what I, what we found out was that this was a style of shooting formerly known as precision rifle series, but this wasn't a quote unquote sanctioned match. But I had no idea. You're going to give me the ranges? Are you yeah. kidding me? Mm-hmm. You're going to tell me where the targets are? <laughs> Man, I got, I didn't get last, but holy cow, I yeah. got humbled and the drive home was probably I don't know, I don't know, an hour and a half two hour drive there's probably a quarter of it a third of it that was dumb this is stupid this is a game there were people look like and they were carrying 15 grocery bags carrying yeah. different sizes of sandbags this is a joke it's not practical and then the other three quarters of the drive home well you know if i did this a little bit different i didn't gotta get a 10 round mag and if i if i if i fill this bag with sand it'll be a little heavier and it'll fit in those better and it was an ego check, 
And then I was like, how can we do this better? And then next thing you know, fast forward 10, you know, 10 years yeah. and you're, you're, you're. Well, and if you notice this, um, if it would have been easy for you and you would have done good, would you have been as addicted to it? Probably not. Yeah. So no. I always, no. I always yeah. quit. I've got a bunch of friends that have gotten into shooting bows. I had never shot a bow ever. And I went one day, my buddy had wanted to set up a tree stand to go bow hunting in. And we set it up, got it for him, and he couldn't afford to tag for out of state. And we were both in college, and I'm like, I think I could probably shoot a bow. It looks like a peep sight on my AR. This yeah. isn't that complicated. So my dad's out of town, and I went into his bedroom, and I took his bow, and I was like, ah, he'll be fine. I'm probably not going to see a deer anyway. And I go into the stand, and I'm sitting there for about 45 minutes to an hour, and I can hear something walking in, and sure enough, a doe walks in. I'm like, cool, I got a doe tag. I drew it back. And all of a sudden I realized, like, I'm 5'9", my dad's 6'2", draw link's a little different, so I'm really yeah. reaching back. I'm like, oh, I can see now, and I let it go. And uh, she takes off running. I'm like, this is stupid. Why would you have red arrows? <laughs> I'm looking on the ground like, oh, no, wait, that's blood. Yeah. And uh, she ran, did a big circle about 30 yards, fell over dead. Perfect heart shot. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, now the work starts. Yeah. So I had to load it up in the mule, take it up to the house, lift it up on the tractor, put it on a gimbal, skin yeah. it out, got it, everything else, put it in the walk-in cooler. And then I had to call and go, I probably ought to get permission for borrowing that bow. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he's like, what do you mean you borrowed my bow? I'm like, well, I, I, I borrowed your bow. And he goes, well, it's dark. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, did you get anything? I'm like, got a doe. And he just kind of sat there. He's like, you do realize that like I hunted for six to eight months and like constantly out there trying to figure out, you know, the pattern and everything else. Because you sat in your buddy's tree stand and you shot a doe the first 45 minutes you went. I was like, yeah, so. It's generally not how that works. Yeah. Generally not how it works, right? Because <laughs> you got to get them in close to you. And I shot it at like 10 yards. Yep. And uh, so I go to him like, he's like, well, okay, put my bow up, clean the arrow up, you know, leave my stuff alone, go buy your own. Okay. So I go to Bass Pro, found whatever I could afford as a college student, mm -hmm. $375 bear bow or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I went out, went hunting the next day. Well, a coyote came up in front of me, so I shot a coyote. Like, Those are fair game in Missouri all year long. Yep. Yep. So I shot it. And then I went out the next day and I shot another coyote. And then we went out the following weekend and I'm like, oh, there's a squirrel there. And we can shoot squirrels with the little, you know, pronged broadhead, broadheads. Yep. Well, Pop yep. the squirrel. Yeah. And then I go out the next day and, you know, of course my dad's sitting there and was like, you can't kill something every time you go out. And a uh, bobcat comes sitting up there and we well, can't shoot a bobcat in Missouri until like November 15th. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Like, I've never seen a bobcat in person. Yeah. I'm yeah. staring at it 12 yards away. It has no idea I'm here. It's literally sitting at a log looking the other direction. This would be the easiest thing in the world. <sighs> I got to let it go. And about that time, it left, and the turkeys started coming out. Now, I didn't know in Missouri during bow season you could shoot a turkey during deer season. So I watched it for an hour. I was like, you know, pulled my phone out. Start going through the Missouri Department of Conservation website, like just see if I can find out what's the season. Yeah. And then my phone dies. Ah. Uh. If I'd have had one more percent of battery, I would have been like, oh, go ahead and shoot it. Yeah. yeah. So I stuck it in my pocket, waited till it turned dark. All of them left. And I get back to, back to the farmhouse. My dad goes, oh, you didn't see anything this time? And I go, no, I still watched, you know, a few turkeys for a while. Why didn't you shoot it? And I go, ah, my phone was dead. I couldn't, couldn't figure out if they were legal to shoot during deer season. He goes, well, when you get your archery tags, you get deer and turkey. And I'm like, well, that's on the app on the dead phone. <laughs> and so that was the last time I went bow hunting. Yeah. And that's seven, eight. 10 years. Well, yeah. I guess it's more than that. It's uh, 15 years ago, probably. Yeah. And, and I haven't just, been since. Just so. a, you know, yeah, the, because it was, it seemed easy at first. It was, yeah, it was yeah. too easy. It, it, yeah. it went too quick. It went too easy. So I just don't have a lot of interest in doing it again. Yeah. And I know there's challenge to it. Oh yeah. My buddies love it because they're like, oh man, you got to sneak in early, make sure you cover your scent. And I'm like, nah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's not how it worked for me. Yeah. I, I left school and I still had, you know, the clothes on that I was wearing and I wore a bright t-shirt and I didn't care. And I sat in a tree and like, this wasn't a big deal for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, unfortunately I didn't catch the bug with bow hunting cause bows are a hell of a lot cheaper than bullets. Yeah. So they can I, be, I had a buddy the exact same way. He got into bow hunting. He shot, he was shooting in his backyard, shot a Robin hood, like within the first, yeah. you know, 10 days of him owning a bow. And he's like, oh yeah, see, I did this. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Like I've been shooting a bow for three or four years and never done that. That's like shooting a 170 inch white tail. Yeah. It just doesn't happen oh, very really? often. He was just, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> we, we had that when I was 16. We went out for a vacation out in Colorado. And they're like, oh, we're going to go golfing. The only thing I've ever done is sneak onto the golf course in Excelsior Springs and like 
like probably going to get kicked out after about three or four holes of hacking, losing balls and everything yeah. else, right? So we go through, and my grandfather gives me my grandmother's clubs. We go up to third or fourth hole, and I'm nearsighted. So if I wear contacts now, but then it was like, I'm not going to wear these stupid glasses. So I put them in my pocket, and I hit the ball with the club my grandfather told me to use and told me how to stand and told me how to swing. And he goes, just hit it straight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Great plan. Okay. Yeah. So I did what he said, and I hit it straight, and I'm like, oh, that looks like it's going in a straight line, and then I lost it. The ball's gone. My grandfather's standing there going like, that'll be pretty good. My cousin's standing there. He lives on a golf course down in Houston at the time, and he's like, he goes, you got to be kidding me, and he just literally starts walking straight down the course. Didn't follow the cart path. He's walking a straight line. I'm like, what's his problem? We hop in the cart. We drive around. We go up there, and I'm like, I just like figured that my ball went straight over the berm, kind of maybe yes. bounced on the green. Somewhere. And he goes through and he's standing over the hole with his arms crossed and he's furious. He'd been at that time, you know, I was 16, he's 15. He had been playing golf since he was like five and he had never gotten a hole in one. And mm -hmm. he's standing over the cup and there's my ball. No kidding. And he's like, he picks the ball up and literally throws it at my head. <laughs> and, he's, and of course he's like, you know, I go get the ball. I put it in my pocket. Like, so you mean I don't have to hit another one on this hole? And he's like, oh, I hate you. Uh, and then of course I've never played golf since. Yeah. So I, I join you. I've, uh, Played yeah. golf jokingly, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. all it was to me, uh, based on my level of skill and involvement. But uh, it sounds like a lucky guy. Obviously, some good hand-eye coordination. Yeah, uh, just that level of coordination, which probably translates to the three-gun sport, because very quickly you went from getting your tail handed to you to rapidly. Well, and I don't know how rapidly, but pretty rapidly becoming kind of a force to be reckoned with yeah if you start throwing enough rounds down range and get enough reps then yeah you're gonna you're gonna get better at it there's mm -hmm. kind of the rule of 10,000 you want to get good at something you need 10,000 reps wow. um, so if you go out and you decide you want to be you know good at baseball you need to throw the baseball 10,000 times mm -hmm. uh, you want to hit a baseball you need to hit a baseball 10,000 times uh, it was kind of the same thing the first year of shooting I shot well over 10,000 rifle rounds well over 10,000 pistol pushed close to it in shotgun Whoa. and like I said just shooting a lot all the time and yeah. it was one of the things where you know like at my office hours now are different than what they were then uh, i would work nine to six monday through friday and then we were on the range saturday maybe also sunday every weekend mm. and so that obviously caused some some marital distress oh yeah uh, so then i decided to take a look at everything and like okay well what can i cut my hours at work to make time yeah well friday afternoons are basically a void there's no yes, sense in working on friday, friday. <laughs> shooting on Friday and I'm home before my wife's off work Friday afternoon. Yeah. And so now mama's happy yep. and I get to go shoot. Um, the only downside is a lot of times that's not on your buddies can always go shoot with you. Yeah. So, um, but that made it to where you could go practice, put time in, put in reps. Yeah. Uh, but you had to be a little more focused on things. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, it's one thing to shoot 10,000 rounds, but if you're actively training, you know, there's yeah. a difference like in the, in the exercise world or in the you know, fitness world, like if you're, if you're, let's say strength training, for like say powerlifting or something there's a difference between exercises and and training yeah uh and if you're just out there blasting rounds you're blasting rounds but if you're focused with a purpose in a documented and regimented way um well and that's just like this match uh the weekend before we came out here a friend of mine that's uh in the army he's getting ready to leave from leavenworth go back to north carolina uh, we went out and practiced specifically for this match so we're not hammering two on paper because that's a complete waste of time here. Mm -hmm. It's one shot on the head, on the head box on the target, right? Yep. Okay, there's zombies. All right, well, we're going to set up a bunch of small steel all the way around the bay, and we're going to shoot with a pistol, and you're going to shoot these two, swing hard, shoot these two. Reset, do it again. Work it from right to left, left to right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to go through and set up paper. And with the bay that I have built, it's about 30 by 30 yards. So you can't really shoot a lot of steel in there with a rifle without damaging yeah. things. But I've got some short range rifle steel that does work. So we're shooting headshots on those. And so it's like, all right, we're going to shoot paper head, right? mm -hmm. head paper. And then we're going to go back and forth, back, left to right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it's two to five rounds at a time, but with purpose. Yep. Yeah. With purpose. And that's yep. the big one. One thing that I think our listeners could, could uh, glean out of this, if you would indulge us, you talked about how you spent close to $30,000 yeah. and shot close to 30,000 rounds. For the listener that isn't participating but has a pistol, has a shotgun, has an AR, what would you recommend to to get started? You know, let's say they have Glock 17, a classic, you know, Smith & Wesson AR-15, yeah. and some sort of semi-automatic shotgun, you know, Mossberg or something like mm -hmm. that. What would you recommend to them to not have to spend thirty grand and not spend, you know, 30,000 rounds of ammo that would 
help them get on the path for equipment, you know, site upgrades uh, and training that you would recommend just to help them get started like you did? So usually what I do, if I'm going to train for uh, anything in particular, I'm going to find out what I'm going to be focusing on there. So like if I'm going to Texas to shoot three gun, we're going to shoot a lot of long range. I might go shoot a PRS match, Mm. right? So I'm going to kind of diversify a little bit there. And a lot of guys who are jumping into it, that's probably not your best option to like, all right, let's go buy a, you know, $5,000 rifle with a $3,000 optic and let's go shoot out to a thousand yards to get ready for a three gun match where we're going to shoot four MOA and larger targets out to maybe 600, right? The the targets we shoot in three gun, you guys be sitting there going like, are you shooting these standing? Mm -hmm. Well, in, in a lot of cases, you yeah, we, we will are. Be. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, we will be. We'll be shooting off as the crook of a tree. Yeah, after sprinting a hundred yards or whatever it may be through the stage. Yeah. So very dynamic. Um, yeah, exactly. And then if I go through them, go into a different area, and they're really heavy on pistol, I'm going to go shoot a USPSA match. Um, so I, I kind of like to spread that love around a little bit because I can go through and glean more from one or the other just by kind of focusing on what that's going to have at that major match. Okay. Now, if you're just talking about getting into the sport, 99% yeah. of people getting into it are going to go to a local club level. Yeah. Right? Go to your local match, talk to the people running it, ask when you can come watch, check it out, then go to participate, and don't buy anything that you don't have to. You need a holster to safely hold your pistol. You need to have a few pistol mags and a few rifle mags. Figure out what you're going to do with your shotgun to be able to load it. Minimal practice on it. Don't do anything crazy at your house or anything like that. Please don't load and shoot rounds inside your house, screwing up, trying to dry fire without any kind of yeah. guidance first. There are literally instructors that will help you with dry fire for three gun and for USPSA, right? Okay. Follow, follow their lead. Yeah. Um, when it comes to getting better at one gun or the other, take some classes from people who do those things. Uh, one of the, the better examples I can give you, there's a, so all these different sports, USPSA, uh, three gun, PRS, all that stuff. And there's one that's kind of been growing called the tactical games. And oh, yeah. I did one yeah. of those in 2019, uh, shot in the elite division, realized real quick that it might be on the elite side on shooter, but not so much on the fitness side at the mm-hmm. time. Right. Um, one of the guys that's doing really well into it now was a CrossFit guy who decided to get into shooting named Jacob Hepner. Mm-hmm. So the CrossFit guys are immediately going to know who that is. Yeah. Um, the guy that owned the tactical games at the time called me and says, Hey, can you help this guy? He's physically dominant but he can't sit the hit the broad side of a barn standing in it <laughs> and i'm going like well, how bad hit could the it ocean be? if he was yeah. standing on the beach yeah and it's like how bad could it possibly be so we went through and set up some targets and i'm like okay so jacob just come up here we'll just shoot this you know we're going to run forward three steps and you're going to approach the line like you do in in the tactical games there's not a lot of dynamic shooting like free gun or uspsa in that right five people are going at the same time you got a shooting line three to five steps come up here, shoot this target. And he's a CrossFit guy. So you don't ever lose tension in CrossFit, right? Like maintain it all the time. Yeah. He comes up and knots his shoulders up. And it's like two softballs on his shoulders. I'm like, yeah. whoa, calm <laughs> down. Yeah. And he's gripping his gun so hard, which I mean, I, I try and choke the life out of my pistol, but I stop right when my hand starts to shake. Yeah. And his front mm. end of his gun is flopping around like crazy. So we get that relaxed. By the time we were done with them, he was hitting a target at 50 yards. There's an A zone. Oh, right. nice. So six by 11 yeah. at 50 yeah. yards. It's like, okay, repeat what you did there and you'll be fine. Then we started working on his rifle. And a lot of times you don't know what you don't know, right? So like being sponsored by Vortex, sometimes you go through and you hear from the guys like, right, the number one reason we get returns are people over torque their scope rings, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Well, let's see what problems he's having. And he goes, well, I have to re-zero my rifle after every stage. Stop. <laughs> we're just going to tear this all apart and we're yeah. going to figure this out. Well, somebody had helped him with Cerakote and he got Cerakote down into the threads on the scope mount. So when we tried to torque it to 18 inch pounds, it's not happening. You can mm. spin the scope. So we kind of got the scope mount swapped out everything else and went from him having to re-zero after every stage to hitting a skinny Sammy, a 14 inch tall, two inch wide target at 350 with an AR. And like night and day difference for him few weeks later he goes to their nationals and takes second and almost wins oh wow and it's like he is dominant yeah right yeah um now he's getting the the uh, shooting side down and you're going like oh crap <laughs> like how much am i gonna have to work to stay ahead of this guy because i like <laughs> i, I mean, just he's, created he's, a he's, monster exactly you know like I, I love shooting with a guy because he's got a great attitude and super positive but yeah. at the same time i like trash talking a little bit so it's like all right you're gonna come out and shoot with us on saturday and shoot some uspsa you're like you know i'm gonna whip you by 20 percent, right like, yeah you're not getting 20 this time it's like oh yeah yeah <laughs> And you're like, ah, oh, 
18. <laughs> Ooh, uh, okay, now we're at 14. Yeah. Like, oh, he's creeping mm-hmm. up on me. Uh, but that guy went and took just enough um, of a class from me and then turned around. What he turned that into was taking like some high end USPSA pistol classes, taking some rifle classes, focusing on very specific things mm-hmm. and specific skills. And we've invited him out to the three gun side, but the shotgun is something that doesn't have any allure to him. So it's not his game that he wants to play. Sure. So he comes and shoot USPSA up with us. Yeah. Hmm. For three gun, you kind of have to be, in all honesty, kind of good at everything. Yeah. But course. you don't have to be great at everything. Right. You know, in USPSA, I'll shoot A class and B class for most of the stuff I'm classified in. That is not an elite level in USPSA. Sure. Right. Uh, it's competitive. I mean, at any club match you go to in the country, a, a A-class shooter could end up winning that match if it's their day. Mm-hmm. But it's not always their day, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then you go to the PRS side. I'm about mid-pack. Yeah. That's, dude, there's a lot of us in yeah. the yeah. middle of the <laughs> pack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the middle of the pack I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with in that realm because it is, it is outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. You haven't um, taken your 10,000 shots. Exactly. And if, yeah. Yeah, if you want to change gears, you could change gears but it, it yeah, takes I'm, a concentrated effort exactly yeah. and i'm still on the original barrel of my prs rifle so mm. um you got that built and you know it's kind of like oh cool i'm gonna get, go play this game it's like six five creedmoor yeah and then you show up and you're like oh everybody's shooting a six millimeter now uh, a lot of people it didn't, going back didn't to that. six five a lot of us going back to really six five, yeah. uh i barrel don't life. have any issue with it yeah um we actually shot gas gun at the vortex extreme with six five creedmoor sure. and won the gas gun division nice and i think fifth or sixth overall and that was our first venture into long range shooting mm-hmm. as kind of a team event, which meant like, hey, let's go shoot PRS. We'll whip up on these guys. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, like you went whole hog in in the the targets and the, you yeah, know, the yeah. firearms and all that. Some of the, the the elite level PRS guys, some of what they were, I'll go back to a, an old school guy uh, from Nebraska, coincidentally, but his name was uh, Jerry Jerry Karloff. If it was a primarily prone match. He was in the run to win it every yeah. single time. And he could win other matches too, mm-hmm. but a lot of the matches that we'd run out west where they're not, you know, kind of circus stages where it's a lot of natural terrain and stuff, he could just, I mean, he was a sh- shooter. Yeah. And I think the story was told every day he shot at least one magazine through his rifle, through his precision rifle at a 400-yard berm. And it was a dedicated, concentrated effort, yep. and he was good for a reason. We but had any bitty uh, little targets out there and just practice. Yeah, yeah. Pra- yeah. We we had a guy that um, he doesn't shoot anymore, but he was shooting three gun when basically everything was being televised and all of that stuff. And uh, we went through and I'm like, man, like this guy came out of nowhere. And he was, I think he was out of like Southern Missouri. And they're like, he didn't come out of nowhere. Like he'd been beating up on us for a while. Like, yeah, but like, I'd never heard him. Like, well, he didn't travel for this, didn't travel for that. And then once the TV stuff entered, all the money kind of entered the sport. Yeah. And that brought in a lot of what, uh, what I'll call mercenary shooters, right? is they're going to come in and shoot the sport when there's a lot of money, mm. right? And then, of course, when the money dries up and the They'll companies are another sport, they're going to move to another sport. And, uh, and that didn't happen as much with him as it did with others, but it was like he had a rural house. So before he went to work every day, he stepped off of his porch and he shot pistol and gongs off of his deck, put his pistol up, then he got his rifle out and shot offhand targets out to like 300 yards. And then he went to work every day. Wow. And you're going like, I'm in Kansas City. I could probably do that once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and then, then the second day, they're going to be waiting for me and be like, yeah, now I'm going to jail. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, if you live on the farm, you could, I could probably get away with that now. Yeah. So but, then you're, what you're saying is I have no excuse to be a mid-pack. Yeah, you should be a shooter. Level. Since I, yeah. I, I can shoot a 600 yards, I can walk out my, um, you know, 100 yards from my house and go shoot 600 yards. So We've all got excuses. Well. No, I'm not saying they're good ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We've got, got them. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like, you know, Based on what you said, just kind of summarizing was, if you've got the the three guns required, use the three guns required and simply go shoot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just have go to shoot. shoot. Get some good quality instruction from whether that be a competitor or an actual instructor, or somebody who knows what they're doing. Get some instruction. Get the, you know, that doesn't take weeks and weeks and weeks. No. It takes a little bit of instruction. And the worst and thing is spending the same running. money twice. Yeah. So if you go through, and, and basically what I ended up doing is I had to spend money two, three times when I started which is why it got so expensive. So, hey, we got to go. We got to have stuff to, to have shotgun shells. Well, these hold more, and I didn't know anything about the sport, and they held like six shells, but they were stacked up, and it's eight, nine inches tall, and it's going to sit right on your stomach. Well, you can't bend over. Yeah. You can't lean. You can't kneel. You can't do anything with those on your body. And so I bought them, and I bought like four of them because I don't know how many I'm going to need, 
and then like I never used them again because I had to buy something that was smaller footprint. Yeah. And then like, oh, a new thing comes out and I bought it. A new thing comes out and I bought it. Yeah. So if you go, patient. if you go and like, hey, I'm literally going to just put shotgun shells in my pocket and it's, it's going to be ugly. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to win. Just figure out that you're not going to win the first time you go ahead of yeah. time. And then you go through and look and like, well, what are those? Well, why do you like those? Is there something that like, if I were starting, would you recommend that? Everybody out here is going to be like, hey, listen, here, I got a backup belt in the truck. Put it on. Try them. I'll show you this. You can borrow it for the match. Yeah. And then do that. Like, don't go out and spend a bunch of money. Yeah. Show up and realize you have the wrong gear. Yeah. I would say one thing I've noticed in the, the long range sports that, that I compete in and then now that I'm in marketing, I go around and you got three gun and USPSA and all these other shooting sports. I've never been around bench rest, but Matt shot on our team for quite a while. At least in the in the shooting sports that I've been around, everybody is incredibly generous with their equipment and their knowledge, and nobody's out to sabotage you. No, you know nobody's yeah. nobody's it's out there to make you exceedingly rare. Bad. And usually, when that does happen, uh, we tend to kind of cull our own. Yeah, they get weeded out. They get weeded out quick, and they get exposed quick um, yeah. because we just we don't put up with that. Yeah. frankly, nobody. Yeah. yeah, nobody benefits. Yeah, nobody benefits, and nobody's happy about it. Um, I, I've been at matches where I've handed somebody a piece of gear that I took second and they took first, and I don't know if that piece of gear was the difference or not, but I wasn't going to not give it to them again. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. oh, you were shooting open and you didn't bring a rear bag. Like, hey, I've got three of them here. Which one do you want to try? Yeah. Like, I'd recommend this one for this stage. And they use it, and then they crush it, and you're like, okay, cool. Well, you beat me by five points. Not saying you would have been six points behind if I wouldn't give you that bag. Yeah. But I'd give you the bag again next time right versus off. like holding it out. And yeah. everybody I've been around is in the same. Oh, you're almost out of pistol ammo to match. What are you shooting? I've got some of this. I got some of this. Uh, I got some stuff over here that's heavy stuff. Do you need it? Like, all right, cool. Here you go. Finish yeah. the match. I'm not going to That's awesome. Yeah, it's just great to see. It, it is. is. Yeah. Speaking of ammo, so you mentioned earlier that you do a lot of reloading. Um, are you still reloading? And if so, from a bullet weight standpoint for each of your, your firearms, you have some go-to stuff that works or? I've got my ideals, yeah. the stuff I like the most. Sure. Uh, so I'm loading a 115 half for 9 mil. Right on. Um, CFE powder, uh, whatever primer I can get at the time. Yeah. And then... <laughs> it's 2023, uh, man. I, I am kind of uh, a little bougie when it comes to the brass. I want all my brass roll sized. Okay. Uh, right. I've had a few times where stuff just has a little bit of a bulge and you just kind of wonder if that was the reason you had a malfunction. Okay. And I'm not willing to deal with that. Yeah. So... Uh, I've got a guy that's in Kansas that can roll size brass and half the time it's like, Hey man, how much brass do you have? He goes, well, I've got 50,000 pieces of bowl. I'm like, well, how much for 20? Give me 20,000 brass, all of it roll size prepped and ready to go. Now it'll run through my press smooth. And I know I'm not going to have an issue. Wow. Hmm. Uh, rifle side, I've mostly lately been running, um, Hornady 55 grain FMJ, hmm. uh, because price wise, yeah, you know, yeah. I, can, I can buy bulk in that and shoot it for most of the hoser stuff, if you will. Yeah. I'll go to the 75 grain black for long range. Okay. If I'm yeah. going to load, I'm going to shoot the 75 grain a little hotter just because it lines up with the BDC perfect in my optic. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. And you pick then, up some BC there for those longer shots, yeah, like you mentioned, some wind That and let's, let's be honest. We're shooting pretty good size steel in three gun. Yeah. I'd like it to shake the target a little harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. 55 grain, you start pushing 600 yards, you're like, oh, I hit it. Did no, you, you didn't. Yeah. Like we're all watching on glass back here in a spotting scope. Like you hit a rock eight feet left. Yeah. And you thought you hit it because it sounded like a thwack. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right. But that target didn't move mm-hmm. and the flasher on it didn't ring versus I shoot it with a 75 and it shakes yeah. and flashes like it's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Right on. Yeah. From a, I guess a practice and competition standpoint, do you try to practice with what you compete? Because you have to be yeah. so much shooting going on. You're, burning through bullets yeah you're going to burn through quite a bit yeah. and a lot of the practice you're going to do um you know, situational like 75 grain i'm not burning that up shooting paper right right and usually i'm not going to shoot a lot of it during a practice session 20 to 40 rounds max because i'm going to set up a tank trap like you mentioned yeah. I've, I've got a tank trap and i've got a barricade and i've got all that stuff and uh or a tree or a post or like i got a buddy that's bringing a car door uh, or I'm sorry, truck door. His F-250 had a big gash in the door, so he got a new truck door, so he's bringing mm-hmm. the old truck door out. We're going to mount it onto a platform. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to shoot off of it. Um, with that, one or two shots per drill. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, some hoser practice with the rifle. Yeah. Uh, just trying to be quick on transitioning between stuff. Got it. So on the ammo side, now moving over to firearms, you've mm-hmm. 
walk us through a, uh, what divisions are there in three yeah. gun, what divisions you shoot, and then what your uh, firearm setup and optics setup look like for each of those divisions that you shoot more than so one. So all of my stuff looks as close as possible to the same. Okay, you shoot uh, more than one division. Yeah, I, okay. I've got, I, I'm a gear guy, so I, I end up buying everything humanly possible. I mean, yeah. You get addicted to it, you're like, okay, well, I really need this and this and this. Right. Um, so at this match, TAC Ops or Tactical and Open are the two divisions. Okay. For Open, I'll shoot a box-fed uh, shotgun from Dissident Arms. Um, All right. So 20-round magazine comes yeah. in, reload with a 12, and super fast, two How red cool dots on it. Yeah. Uh, super loud, super fast, gun doesn't move when you shoot it. Um, great, great gun, I super bet. fun. And then with the pistol, I get to run a comp, a dot, big sticks on there. So big MBX mags with 29 rounds each and just let it eat. Right. Oh man. Um, I might even bump the powder charge a little bit on those one fifteens, put them out around 140 power factor just to get enough gas working. So that, yeah. so that, so yeah. that comp is pushing down, yep. uh, keep that dot from moving. And then when we switch over to, uh, attack ops, or tactical, or whatever you want to call it, depending on what match, um, single optic on the AR, so I can't have an offset dock anymore. Oh, from, yeah. Yeah, no, no rolling it. you got to use that one optic. Okay. Uh, no bipod. Tube-fed shotgun. You can start with nine rounds. Has to be hand-fed. No dot, no comp. Oh, wow. Uh, pistol, iron sights. Um, magazine links limited to 140 millimeters. So for me, 24 rounds with an MBX mag and a 2011, for, for me, a honcho. Mm-hmm. Um, Belt setups are going to be relatively the same across the board for me. Yeah, you'd probably try to keep that just muscle yeah, memory. Yeah, so I want things it, in the same with, spot. With three gun, it gets a little different because you have so many gear shifts. Mm-hmm. You know, like in open, I want my pistol mags all the way in the front, and then I want my shotgun mags on the side, rifle mag in the back. Rifle mag never moves. Um, for attack, you have to load your shotgun by hand. I want those in the front. Now the yeah. pistol goes to the side. Okay, but I can't run with a big twelve round or fifteen round. Box shotgun mag for shotgun bagging, right yeah. in the front, smacking you in the knees as you're running. So right. it kind of does shift and move a little bit there, okay. uh, but it's not as dramatic. Uh, and then we get into like heavy divisions that are, they're still kind of floundering because of component ammo prices with 308 and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, which is, it's a super fun division because you're shooting 308. Yeah. Uh, but basically tac ops, tactical, add a 308 and some divisions you may have to have a 40 or 45 for pistol. Mm. Uh, and then they have like, Heavy irons, so one power optic on the 308. Okay. 45 single stack, and then a pump shotgun. That's one division you'll never catch me in. I'm not pumping a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, so. that'd be, you'd have to be getting with it. Yeah, and I, I just don't have a whole lot of interest in operating my shotgun on my own. Sure. Everything yeah. else has a spring in it, and it operates itself. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's 2023. My guns can handle <laughs> yeah, that. My so. guns can handle themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then there's a, a newer division I've been shooting a lot of called Modified. So kind of a happy medium between TAC and open. So think of it as like uh, you've shot TAC for your entire career and your eyes aren't as good as they used to be and you kind of want that red dot on your shotgun and your pistol. Yeah. And you like, hey, I'm not as stable as I used to be. I'd like to have a bipod on my rifle too. Great. That's where you fall into. Okay. Otherwise, it's just like TAC, but you've got a bipod, uh, dots on basically all the guns yeah. except for your rifle, uh, and then you got your variable powder scope on your rifle. Excellent. Get into the reloading red zone with reloading tools from Hornady. Innovation, craftsmanship, and reliability. Hornady reloading presses are built with American pride and backed by our legendary no-risk warranty. Hand load precision with tools from Hornady. It sounds like uh, a lot of gear, but a lot of fun. And one of the yeah. cool things that I've gleaned from this conversation, because I don't know you very well, Dylan, is that it's not just three gun; it's all the sports. It's about you specifically. Yeah, that it's. Yeah, you can tell the competitor inside is yeah is addicted yeah. to competing <laughs> in general. And I think there's something uh, almost cathartic about that. That like it's it's yeah it's a desire. And if you're a really competitive individual and you don't compete. Yeah, it's not a healthy place to be. So you you got to find you'll something. find something to compete in, whether yeah. it's healthy or not. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, between the PRS, USPSA, yeah. the three gun, all the shooting sports. You ever get any shotgun sports specifically? Shot a little bit. I'm actually uh, right now. If everything works out, I'll go over and represent the U.S. in Thailand at the Ipsic World Shoot for shotgun. 
Oh, dude. So it'll be, uh, think of USPSA, but shooting uh, just, just shotgun only. Hmm. Yeah. So I've got a, a very specific set of it's modified division. So uh, 1,320 millimeter length on the shotgun. Uh, I've got a, a prototype stock that Roth Performance was working on. And so I can just barely make the length with a full 12 round tube. Yeah. So it kind of gives me a nice advantage there. Um, and then the, the thing is just set up beautifully and it's like, okay, let's, let's see if we can make this work and get over to Thailand and have some fun. Absolutely. Do. So dude, that's super cool. Yeah. Well, for, for those listeners that kind of talked about, you know, you've got the equipment, just run it, just go shoot and practice. Well, to find that local match is there, there, I know there's Facebook pages and stuff out there, but what's kind of the sanctioning body? How do you just find that, your local club? There isn't. Okay. So that is probably one of the biggest bugaboos with three gunning currently. Um, so pistol, pistol sports, you can go IDP, you can go USPSA and you'll find a couple outliers that won't be under those umbrellas. But if I want to find a pistol match in Kansas city, Missouri, I can go to USPSA.org, pull it up like, okay, here's all the USPSA affiliated clubs. And you realize from Kansas city, I can drive like an hour East, 30 minutes West, a little North, a little South. And I can find Tuesday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. I can find all kinds of stuff. Awesome. You go to the three-gun side. Not there. There is no sanctioning body currently that holds any kind of stranglehold over the sport, mm. uh, which a lot of people like that because that means that you have various flavors. Like, for instance, this match has a very specific flavor. It's a themed match. No, oh, the zombie shoot. The, he- yeah. the zombie shoot, the headshots, all, all of that stuff is dramatically different than anywhere else in the country. Nowhere else in the country is a match like this. The, the run what you brung division for amateurs and stuff like that, right? That doesn't exist anywhere else. Mm. So, like in our squad, we've got, you know, got a guy that works in the industry that's a very strong shooter. We got his buddy that's shooting his first match. Uh, my buddy, who was a commander over the AMU for two and a half years, that's shooting with me. Awesome. And then me, and then we go through, and we got a couple of guys from Minnesota that are very strong shooters. And then we've got six or eight guys that are running random gear and having the time of their life loving it mm. just shooting stuff yeah, which is yeah. great yeah. that's fantastic i mean those those are the guys that ultimately if they really like it they're gonna be here next year the next year yeah. the next year the next year and then they're gonna find other stuff to go play in yeah. um but that that flavor doesn't exist anywhere else awesome. well if it was only through just the same just that body. sanctioning body yeah it's really hard for horny to put that on without being in that sanctioning body and you may not be allowed to use zombie head targets yeah interesting yeah. So I guess Facebook might be the best place to. I'd search actually prefer around. Practice Score to be honest with you. Go, okay, yeah, um, score. I think Practice Score. You could search Three Gun. You know, and the hard part comes is Three Gun, Three Dash Gun, Three Space Gun, yeah. Multi Gun. I mean, you could search all kinds of stuff, and depending upon what that club calls it, yeah. then you can search by your state. You can search by your region. You know, uh, I think that's going to pull up more opportunities for more people lately. Awesome. So Practice Score, check yeah. that out. One last thing I want to talk about that kind of spans all sports. Uh, yeah, well, all literally all sports, but shooting sports specifically, and what I what I really see in a lot of really good three gunners, uh, you know, you, you and I are both friends with Ruben Alex, oh, yeah. and he's uh, I've known Ruben for a long time, and he's a very different person a few minutes before he starts yes. before he starts yeah. the stage. And what I want to talk about is the mental game, and if you would just walk us through kind of your mentality before going onto a stage, uh, because I think that. Um, yeah, you can have skills and you can have the right equipment, but there's a lot of people with the right equipment. How do you mentally go through a stage before you get to the stage that helps you? I think you have to start with confidence first and know that you can do something, mm-hmm. right? If, if you don't, if you're not confident with it, you're like, okay, I'm going to shoot four here. Now you're going to shoot 16 rounds to hit those four targets. Then you better remember the fact that your gun's about half empty before you engage the next four, yeah. right? Um, so you got to have the confidence to know that you're going to make that shot, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to, it's going to happen, period. So you have to have that confidence first. Uh, and then once you, you dial that in with three gun, I'll, I'll argue that uh, a lot of the shooting sports are a different form of mental disorder. Yeah. Uh, PRS is OCD. Like you guys are going through and every piece of brass I've seen at PRS is this perfect line all the way around it. Right. Cause yeah. you want to find your brass. Right. Uh, versus in three guns, like, well, we leave two, two, three brass everywhere we go. All right. None of us ever pick anything up. And for us, it's ADD. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through and burn through these seven shotgun targets as fast as I can and get rid of it. And then I got to focus on the rifle. And then when I get to the rifle, I'm going to go two to the left, two to the right, two to the left, two to the right, one to the left, two left, one right, and then four across the back. So I'm going to remember numbers. Okay. And then I got to switch up and I got to change to my pistol. When I, and I go to pistol, I'm going to run up to the front. I got to load it. I'm going to stand in that spot. 
And in that spot, I can see everything, but I got to squat here and I got to stand tall here to see them. Uh, so you have to remember little baby stage plans. Um, it's not, uh, not like PRS where like the last PRS match I shot. Okay, here we are. It's a shoot to continue or hit to continue, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're going to shoot at 800 yards. If you don't hit it, you don't get to go to a thousand and you'll keep shooting. Like, okay, we'll, we'll worry about that. Yeah. Man. I'll worry about the thousand if I get to it. Right. Right. Uh, but I'm only doing it off of this one rung. And then once I hit, I move to that rung. So my thought process is still in development for PRS. Sure. Uh, you know, USPSA, different thought process for it too. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it's two on target, sometimes it's three, sometimes they're classifiers, they tell you exactly how to shoot it. You kind of have to go and break that down and mentally go through whatever you're walking into. Uh, but for three gun, I usually go through many stage plans. Yeah. This is what the shotgun is. Then it dump it, and now we're going to the new stage plan, and that's what that yeah. is. And then at the end, control alt delete, go to the next yeah, exactly. stage. <laughs> and I wish I could. Yeah, yeah. You know, we had a conversation about that at dinner last night. I'm like, no, you don't understand. In 2012, at the CMMG Midwest Three Gun that no longer exists anymore, I can tell you where the targets were and what the targets were shaped as on stage two when we shot down this bay. I know wow. where they are, where they were, what I missed. You know, I don't remember my time. Yeah, but I can tell you like where those were. Wow, uh, I can tell you where the one in the woods was with the deck that we shot our pistol on, you know, how many targets there were and where they were at. Um, I wish I could delete that information. <laughs> so you got a big hard drive. Yeah, you got yeah. a lot of bandwidth there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and it, it does. It kind of eats you alive you're like, okay, no, that was the last match, not this one. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I used to go through and lay in bed and go like, okay, on stage six, I got to do this. Stage seven, I got to do that. Like, just put it on a piece of paper and look at it tomorrow. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, and it sounds like uh, to have that, you know, rolodex of information in your mind though you got to have the confidence and then you have to have the ability to be present right now yeah. at this stage because you got that you, you can't be pulling up the wrong information no. so you have to be very present in the stage you're about to shoot yeah and uh, I you'd think, be surprised what rattles you oh sure um i've had where you know common thing you're walking up and you know you're two three people after me you're standing there, you got your eyes closed, you're going blah, 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 and you got your hand up here, and somebody thinks you're going to fist bump them or something, right? And yeah. you're doing this, and somebody hits your hand, and you're going like, what the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> and you're going like, okay, where was I? Oh, sure. Oh, got to start all gotta over. Got to start again. over, target yeah. one. Yeah. And I can remember, I shot a, a USPSA match, and we're going to shoot a classifier, and I really, really, really wanted to burn this classifier down as hard as possible. And you had to shoot half of it, reload, reset, shoot the second half. I shot the first half, and I mean, I smoked it. Everything ran perfectly right go to the second one you stand by beep and i can feel my watch and my hands start to shake and jiggle my wife's calling me right in the middle of it mm-hmm. and so it's like it shouldn't have rattled me but what i shot on the left side in two and a half seconds i shot on the right side in three it was just enough that it got in my head and they're mirrored is the identical situation yeah but it was just enough to go yeah. like oh mm-hmm. i can't believe she called me in the middle of it <sighs> it's the little things and then you're answering the phone and you're going like hey babe um yeah, uh, still shooting. Okay, yep. We call right when we leave. You know, it's not her fault, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, man, just like it was just enough to kind of rattle you. Yep. That's, yeah. And it is the little things that, that can make the difference, both the good way and the negative way. Yeah, I've noticed that even, you know, on PRS, like put, if it's safe, it's a 12 round state, that first round, you get, uh, and you're fighting yeah. that bolt. And then it's just, you're, then you, for me personally, I feel like I'm, that took 15 seconds. Yeah. You know, now I'm trying to catch up. Yeah. You know, and then but the wheels it's just, fall yeah. Off. Well, and the worst part is a three-gun shooter, you go to a PRS match, you have 90, 100 seconds to shoot that stage, right? Mm-hmm. So 32 seconds in there, like, you do realize you have a lot of time yeah, left you, that you yeah, could have yeah, hit those targets, right? You have targets, a minute, right? yeah. You slow yeah. down. You yeah. got a minute left, and, you know, you shot, all the t- you shot at all the targets. I can miss four out of ten. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's, a different, um, it's a different pace and different focus. And the good thing is when I do go shoot PRS and I get my butt whipped and I get humbled and everything else, and I come back to three gun with long range targets. I'm like, okay, so I'm pure. Oh, now do this. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going through and you're like, I don't have to shoot fast here. I just boom, hit, boom, hit, yeah. boom, hit. And you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how much faster it is. Not quite PRS slow because we're shooting bigger targets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to shoot a slow cadence. Controlled. Controlled. Yeah. Yep. And then you stand up and people are, sta- I mean, I've, you finish a stage and people stand behind you and they're clapping. You're like, what are you clapping for? You know, like, well, hey, fast time on the stage was 68 seconds, and you just reset it at 52. Wow. Well, it didn't seem that fast. Yeah. Yeah, but you didn't miss. Yeah. Slow. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah. Yeah, that's for our industry day yesterday. I had a couple people had never shot before, and I, that, that was the biggest, one of the biggest things. 
slow down. Yeah, slow down. Yeah. I was right behind them. Slow down. Slow down. You know, just take your time. But, yeah, our, I, yeah, obviously they're not gonna, they're not there to win it or do it. You know, no. to they just want to have fun and just. But slow there's down. there's some targets here that can be pretty frustrating. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're number one. A you know, penalty is five seconds here mm-hmm. for a, for a fail to, to neutralize on yep. the target. Well, that's only one headshot on one of the headshot targets, but there's also rifle clays. A rifle clay at 12 yards, when you don't realize you're offset with your optic, um, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot you again, shoot, yeah, you shoot again. Under, <laughs> yeah. and if you look right below all of those targets, yep. there's a hundred little holes that went through that corrugated plastic and never touched a clay, yep. and they were shot from almost muzzle distance away. Mm-hmm. And so they can be pretty frustrating, and somebody, they try to go faster, well, Pulling the trigger faster doesn't raise the optic up a little bit. Go a little higher, pull yeah. the trigger. Yep. And, uh, I mean, I had guys that are, you know, top-level shooters that we were walking stages yesterday. Like, guys, listen, I've won this match before. Don't shoot with your hair on fire or it will bite you hard here. Yeah. You're going to rack up a bunch of penalties and you're going to find out real quick you drop fast when I shoot a stage in 30 seconds and you shoot it in 35 and then catch a five-second penalty. You're now 75%. You're 25 points off. Yeah, that's yep. one of our favorite sayings here. Uh, going back to Jaden years and years ago, is you can't miss fast enough to yep. hit. Yep. And there's a lot of people, myself included, that can miss pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a fun sport. It's a d- dynamic sport, and I think it's you know three guns specifically is something that our listener, a lot of them have those three firearms, and it's so fun. I ran the zombie match. Uh, Two years ago was the my first introduction to three gun. It's the only time I've ever shot it. Never even never been around it. My boss gave me his gear. I I I had a blast running around. It's running and gunning is probably the funnest thing to do and it, safely, obviously. Yeah. And it is. It's it was just exciting. It was fun. It was dynamic. You're moving. The thought process. You get done and it's like mentally exhausting. Yeah. It's really rewarding and yeah. I think it almost feels wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, a grown man shouldn't be having this much yeah. fun. You're, yeah, you're pointing the gun down range, you're staying safe, but I got to run with it. Yeah. Right? Like, not an aspect of bullseye shooting where I only lift the gun and shoot, or PRS where anytime the gun moves, the bolt has to be open. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 like, I flip the safety on and I'm sprinting with my rifle. It's fully loaded. Got yep. a D60 yeah. in it, and I'm going to go hammer stuff at the front of this bay 30 yards down range. That's cool. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I get to sprint with the gun. Like, there's not many other places you get to do that, especially with three different guns. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well. You know, is there anything else you guys want to talk about on three gun or, or shooting in general? But mm, I can't, I mean, I, I, I would echo what you said last year was my first intro to, intro to three gun. And yeah, I just borrowed everything, you know, yeah. big borrowed and then steel, but yeah, used anything I could get from anybody else and had a blast, you know, running, you know, running a pistol. I'm, 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 well, I always tell everybody I'm just a redneck from central Nebraska. I grew up around guns my whole life, you know, so shooting the shooting part of it, that's not that's not foreign to me, but it, the moving and that, yeah. Cause usually you're laying on your belly, you're laying, you know. Yeah. Or in your case, you know, over a cattle gate yeah, or out or the, you know, out the, yeah. out the truck window, out of coyote running off, yeah. you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it is a, the, the, the moving aspect and just being mobile is fun. It's, yeah. Yeah. I just love it. Well, and Dylan, thanks for being such a great representative for yeah, everybody, you. all the yeah. companies you represent and the sport in, in and of itself, we talked about earlier the camaraderie, how generous yeah. everybody is with their time, their knowledge, their equipment. It's just it's just great to be around. So I know this will air after the zombie match, but for next year, if those are listening, if you're in the area, come check out the match because it is, it's, you know, jokingly, it's a circus. I mean, it's oh, yeah. we got the mm-hmm. circus theme and the zombies, and, you know, I would never think it would last this long, the whole zombie craze, but it's a fun yeah. match. And like you mentioned with the rules and the the stages and how we set those up, and we we daydream up some oh, yeah. kind of fun stuff to go do with a gun. Well, I would even say, too, I stopped out. You were out there this morning shooting, and it's been raining all morning. I stopped out there after after lunch, and it's wet, and it's sloppy, and everybody's got a smile on their face. Everybody's hustling to their stages and having a good time. And that, you know, that's just, I would say that's the shooting sports in general, you know. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I haven't seen too many shooting sports where, like, as long as it's safe, as long as there's no lightning, yeah. people mm-hmm. aren't concerned about safety. Like, no, I mean, this is better than being at work. Yeah. Heck yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And I've always said, like, it didn't, I don't care what shooting sport I'm in, which one I'm playing with, whatever. If I'm pulling a trigger, I'm usually pretty happy. Yep. It doesn't yeah. matter if I'm sitting out with thermal and shooting six arc with a tripod and trying mm. to kill a coyote. If uh, Preach. That's, that's a hell of yeah. a lot better than sitting at work and, and trying to do everything yeah. else, even if you love your job. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's going out with a thermal and a six arc and a tripod shooting a coyote at night is better than sitting at home on the couch watching yes. Netflix a hundred times. <laughs> yes. I mean, that is, that is joy in the prairie. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's a topic for another yeah. podcast. Yeah. Dylan, thanks for coming yeah. on the episode. I've, I've learned a lot and I've enjoyed, uh, just getting your mindset, you know, walking through stages and how dedicated you've been from day one. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Thank you. I'm kind yeah. of happy to be here. Awesome. Matt, anything else? Nope. Groovy. Well, let's go back to shooting. The match isn't over. We're kind of interrupting your match, and you've got a, a weekend full of pulling the trigger. Yeah, yeah. Two more days, so Excellent. more afternoon and the next morning. Well, good luck out there. We'll be cheering for you, and thanks yeah. for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast with Dylan. A great shot, a great ambassador for the sport. We're proud to be involved with him. Hopefully you enjoy this. Hopefully you learn something. Check out 3-Gun. Get involved. Find a local match, and we'll catch you on the next one.